<laughs> I'm just gonna go. But then my pointing, I could see their eyes. They kept looking at my pants. <laughs> and where are your pants? <laughs> Welcome back, you guys. I'm Tassie. This is my Shaman Memoirs channel. And I can now say I am an actively practicing shaman. It's um, definitely a long time coming, you know, instead of three years, I took 10, but you know, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Don't punish me now. And thank you to all of my sponsors who helped make my grand opening such a success. We have Vutastic Jerky with their amazing jerky. And now they are sold here in Minnesota the day I have been waiting for. <laughs> Airscape Designs for your amazing balloon work for my grand opening. Enchanted Florist, thank you, Bahu, for all the flowers that I was able to hand out bouquets to everybody. They were absolutely beautiful. Transformation Healing with Laconia. She is offering the breath work and the initial acupuncture visit. So thank you, thank you, thank you to you guys. It was so amazing just seeing all of you having you guys come into my space really seeing that i'm in a pretty good area you know i know i'm in uptown but it's not the crazy side of uptown so thank you thank you to everybody who came and supported me i just want to know have you guys ever tried an onion in shorts because a girl tried and no my funny said no but you know i i i, put, I have my shorts on and i'm like get ready <laughs> I swear, my cloning are probably like, why are you so annoying? <laughs> I have my shorts on and I, don't, I didn't go take them off, right? I'm like, I put on my shirt and I'm like getting by my tie and I'm getting everything ready. Like, yeah, this is going to be fine. And I was like, I'm not going to tell them I'm going to keep my shorts on. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. But then my cloning, I could see their eyes. They kept looking at my pants and where are your pants? You know what? It's Minnesota. It's hot, okay? <laughs> no, I was not successful in trying to wear shorts as I onang. So I just need to know, have y'all ever onang successfully wearing shorts, okay? I have to wear leggings, okay? And I put my leggings away once winter's over, okay? I only wear leggings under skirts and dresses. Or else, in general, I don't wear leggings. So I'm always in shorts or a dress, like... Come on, man. <laughs> so as promised from my grand opening, I wanted to tell you guys about how the first time going to the spirit world went. <laughs> it was expected. I will get yelled at. <laughs> that is just to be expected, okay? But I did learn a lot about myself um, during the first journey there because the first thing I had to do was, you know, I had put my cloning away for the 10 years. There. <laughs> oh, God. <It's laughs> okay. They were literally like, when I was going to yell that, they literally was like, you know, who gave you the right to take 10 years? We gave you three. And I was like, you know, I needed this. And they were like, oh yeah, were your legs broken during this time and you needed to heal? I was like, no. Were your arms broken and you needed to heal? No. So why did you take 10 years? You know, I'm part of that new age where I need some mental health days. <laughs> Man, did I get yelled at. And it was funny because my sister was there and she was just like giggling to herself because she was seeing me get yelled at all the time. And, I, and I'm literally like, mm -hmm, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know what, but I got through it, okay? If I could get through it, all of y'all can get through it. But I wasn't the only one who got yelled at. <laughs> okay, you guys. So whenever I oning like my lineage, you need somebody to hit the dua three times. Okay, just three times. We don't need it constantly for hours on end. Okay. So my sister, Molly, she had to actually hit the dua, but she's never done it before. So she started like overthinking it. She was so anxious. She didn't know what to do. And I was telling her, like, don't worry, just hit it three times, but make sure you connect, okay? Like, it needs to connect. Don't just laugh, oh, so, you know? Like, and I knew, like, she was thinking, can I practice it? And then my cloning, or like, no, you can't practice it. This isn't a toy. And so she was like, oh my God, oh my God. So I went, I did my thing in my shrine, and then I sat down, and we just went immediately because my cloning, they were in a rush, okay? It's been 10 years. And they're like, we're getting this girl in there. And, and then as we were going, I got, my sister wasn't prepared. She like just froze. 
And then my Kwanang, and like my sister, she it seemed like she just froze because then she didn't do anything. <laughs> Cause I was already going. She I think in her mind she thought she had to hit it first and then I would go, but we were already going. And then my Kwanang they yelled out, Oh <laughs> like, <laughs> They were so mad. <laughs> So then my sister Molly, I swear by the things I put her through. <laughs> my sister Molly, she takes the door and she holds it to the sky. She holds it to the sky and she starts way. <laughs> like, and literally, like, this is what happened. Okay, like, <clears throat> this is a reenactment. I'm literally like this and she's over here and it was literally... My mouth was hanging open, and we were like, who's she trying to wake up? The dead? Like, <laughs> this girl, this girl on something else, she, all that was missing was, the pirates are coming! <laughs> the pirates are coming! <laughs> I have never heard anyone hit the gong so intensely in my life. <laughs> but I'm sure she's traumatized. <laughs> Side note, she was driving us the other day. We went to go eat bun mi and uh it's like in Chaco P, right? Really good food, you guys. And right before uh the the exit is the same exit as going to Mystic, the casino, right? She didn't see that it was way backed up with all the cars. So she slammed on her brakes and she had to pull over to the curb so that we wouldn't hit the cars in front of us. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> And literally, I'm like, oh my god. And then the only thing that was coming to me was, this isn't how it's supposed to go. <laughs> and then afterwards, she had the audacity to be like, oh, so this, this, this you're not going to die. So it's okay. I can drive however I want still. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, yeah, it was bad. She's, <clears throat> I mean, like, I haven't died yet with her driving. <laughs> okay. But then... I was literally looking up at the sky like I, I just kept looking at the sky and everything was just so beautiful I kept looking at the sky and I was like I wonder why I keep looking at the sky and then I heard this voice <laughs> and this voice said go in on and I was like Hoo! never mind I don't need to look at the sky anymore <laughs> yeah I'm telling you my Kwanang probably find me real annoying <laughs> I'm real annoying to my Kwanang <laughs> they're saying no <laughs> But they're also saying that Gutosia. <laughs> so then, yeah, I ended up going back into the spirit world. And, and, you know, like my sister, she was asking me, like, was it like before? And I would say it was better than before. You know, like sometimes I forget that even though I took that break for 10 years, my spirit guides continue to teach me during that time. So this is typically what happens when shamans put their shrine down. Even though Lochi Oneng and they don't go into the spirit world and they don't do any of the ceremonies or any of the work, it's what they would like to call it, um, your Oneng still continue to teach you. You know, it's not something where everything just disappears, you know, and you're left alone. It's not like that. So I really felt like everything like was making sense. Everything, it was much clearer than when I was younger and doing it. And I really believe that I needed the 10 years, you know, like I needed that time for myself to get better. And when I went to go and Oneng, like afterwards, you know, like that, obviously I had to go do a whole lot of ceremony <laughs> and I had to do all sorts of stuff because before you had the so basically that means before a shaman can go and do services for others, they need to clean their own house and they have to take care of their own house including myself you know so before I raised my shrine okay I was like man I'm not doing this you know how much work is involved you know like I kept looking away like I'm not interested and then after I raised my shrine I was like why did I ever stop like it's just one of those things where it didn't make sense anymore like why did I stop I should have continued to do this so that's pretty much how it was like for me afterwards because then you know, I went to go get all my planning back and I felt like a different person, definitely a happier, a better person. And then I was like uh, telling my sister, cause you know, like I always do this whenever, uh, even back then. So I was like, we were like getting my shrine ready one day. It was me and my younger sister. And I said to her, you know, if I ever go dark as a shaman, I need you to let me know. 
And she looks at me and she was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I was like, you know, like if you, if you, if you realize that I've changed as a person, I am not my usual go happy, lucky kind of person. And I am becoming somebody who is a very dark person, you know, like, like you think I'm maliciously harming others or you think that I have changed in my way of thinking, etc. Like I need someone to check me. I need someone to let me know that, you know, I need to take a break and I need to like, whoa, check myself basically. And so, you know, I, I, I I'm going to hold her to that. Okay. But, you know, like, because to me, that's important. I feel like you need somebody who isn't afraid to tell you when they think you've gone on the dark side. Because sometimes when you're so in it, you can't even see it, you know. So I, I think that for all shamans, it's important that you don't seclude yourself and, you know, you don't ha hold yourself so highly above others. I would definitely say I am just a goofy individual, whether people like it or not. But, and for me, you know, when Nang, it's so beautiful, you know, like it's shamanism for us, it's so beautiful. But you have to really be able to understand the art of it, right? To see how beautiful it is. Or else it's just like, oh my God, it's just Nang, you know, like, you, don't get me wrong, okay? When when a shaman goes on onangs, it's very boring, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> even for myself, I can say that. Like, it's extremely boring. But it's definitely me having, be, being the shaman, I can see how beautiful it is, you know? Just being able to connect everything. Granted, yeah, all my questions are answered. But uh, beyond that, you know, just the whole meaning behind it all, you know, having the protection, you know, and your ancestors and having the spirit guides and understanding the full circle of it all and just how beautiful it is for us that we have these abilities, that we have this gift. And is it a curse? I'm not allowed to say it, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> let's just say um, it's not easy, right? The Nang life, it is not easy. It is a lot of work so much work <laughs> okay it is a lot of work and then and then your cloning your spare guides they also come and they make you feel a lot of things that is you know that makes you feel a little insane sometimes but it it it's a whole package you get the good and the bad you know and so with me doing Ning the way I want to now you know like not having the politics involved the clans involved I don't care Okay, like, uh, <laughs> to me, I am a much happier person now. Like, I, for me, I want to focus on just the art, not all of the fluff outside of it. That's not important to me. I don't care that, you know, that's your auntie. You know, <laughs> like, I, I, that don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> Definitely for me, it's also very important for people not to lose certain ways of onang, you know, like, to me, when a lot of people came to my grand opening, you know, like having seen my Nang style, my Nang style, it is more, it has a, a lot of the old style that is part of it. And yeah, I have the new age, I'm considered new age, don't get me wrong, but it's important not to lose our arts, you know, like using animals in ceremonies or choosing not to use animals in ceremonies. Those things are very important to who we are and our roots and especially for shamanism and our traditions, you know? So definitely it's not always going to be that you have the shi jia, but then you have to understand if you don't shi jia, what does that mean? It's kakong, it's black magic then. So, you know, uh, is the Ning style capable of doing that, you know? So it's, it's a lot that goes into it, but I could talk about that another day. Um, so back to me going into the spirit world again, it was just like, it was like those 10 years didn't happen pretty much. Like everything came back and you know, just, uh, the whole motion of it all, the hunko and seeing everything and going to all the places, like the things that you see and how it's so beautiful. There was this one place I went to. And, um, yeah, I get yelled at a lot because I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm like moving everywhere. 
No, there was this one place I went to. It was so beautiful, you guys. Literally, I was like swaying back and forth because it felt so warm and it felt so pure where I was at. And I was just like, ah. And I, I didn't want to leave, but it's like I had to move on in my journey. <laughs> but I went to go visit there. And then, um, you know, like these places that I go to, like a lot of it I can't talk about, you know, so I can explain certain things or images and stuff like that. But there's a lot of the name stuff that I do on the other side. I can't, you know, go into detail with you guys. However, it was definitely, um, it just felt good. You know, it just felt really good again, you know, and I, it, it, it does make me, you know, in retrospect, look back and it's like, why did I stop? You know, but then I, I but then I remember like back then it was such a dark time of all this BS and clan stuff. And there was a lot of jealousy. And the crazy thing is a lot of it wasn't always geared towards me. It was about the people around me and how toxic and negative and how much they all turned on each other. Okay. Like for me, I felt like that was an important time in my life to witness it, to know the realities and the dark side of shamanism, you know, and this isn't just our culture or our community, you guys, this is any community that has, whether it's warlocks or I was going to say magicians, but it's not magicians, <laughs> whether it's warlocks or voodoo or anything, witchcraft, shamanism, even like in the uh, South Korea, you know, like they have shamans over there too. And it's just, there is always, always issues in the, in, in all, com all communities, right? But it was like crazy. Like, cause you know, like when, when you see elders, right? You, you just are always taught that you need to respect them. But when you see how low they can go when it comes to name, it's like, boy, just take it, you know, just go, <laughs> go and be the hot eye you want to be. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know, it's okay. You could take it. Then a lot of times I have to take a step back and I have to think about their traumas. What do they struggle with and how this is all they have. This is literally all they have, right? Name. So it's more important that they feel the way that, that they want to feel when it comes to name rather than, you know, pointing out the obvious. You know, it's it you you win nothing in those situations. So and then now when I had all my clonane with me it was like dolly dolls are. <laughs> like like just i forget how bossy they are <laughs> like they are so direct okay like some people think i'm direct but oh my lord it's got to the point where i'm like shaking <laughs> because it's like whenever it's name stuff related they are very very strict you know like they're like don't do that don't do this. You gotta do it like that. And you gotta do it like this. And I'm just like, ooh, 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 ooh. Like, like, because you're getting yelled at from all directions. But for them, that's their way of teaching me and to make sure I do it right, right? Because they don't want me to do something and then don't want you yell at all. I am so glad to be back. And I will admit a lot of this happened really, really quickly with like setting up my office and having the grand opening and putting up my shrine it was like you know it, again it's one of those things where i'm like why didn't you guys prepare me better and they were like we gave you 10 years how are you like there's no excuse in their eyes right there is no excuse everything i say was just an excuse but it, it, they weren't taking it you know but like look, look at me now okay i'm a much better shaman now <laughs> all right you guys until next time.